welcome back to the channel guys i'm going to be doing another how to build video um as in i'm going to guide you through in how to properly turbocharge a bk2 so 2013 through 2016 genesis coupe 3.8 and i'm going to cover all the basics and i'm going to call cover all the safety things that you need to do to ensure that you're going to have a very fun car, a very powerful car that's gonna last you for a long time. Let's get started. As always, for those of you that are coming back to the channel, welcome back. Um, those of you that are new, please like and subscribe. Every like on the video helps our algorithm in YouTube get better and better and better, which means I can bring you out more informative videos like this in the future. So please, please, please hit that like button. If you have not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe and the bell notification but button. So let's get started right away. You are here today because you want to know how to turbocharge your BK2 Genesis Coupe 3.8. As you saw in the title, BK2 means 13 through 16 it's the second facelifted version of the genesis coupe generation unfortunately genesis coupe was discontinued back in 2016 but it does remain a very very highly thought after vehicle um, when it comes to automotive aftermarket modif modifications um, and you know people are just having fun with it because it has great styling and has really good aftermarket behind it uh, making it a very personalized, very performance-oriented vehicle, and it's not that it's not that you know out of reach for when it comes to budgeting for this car. So it's a great platform to start out with, and I'm going to go over all the parts you're going to need in order to turbocharge the BK238. So let me switch screens here to our uh, my desktop, and I will show you all the little parts you're going to need today. Okay, so to get started, we're going to start off on our website, www.shopbtr.com. All right, so here we are. So very easy to navigate. First thing we're going to do is go to Genesis Coupe Parts and then select the 3.8 GDI 2013 through 2016. So this is the BK2. All right. We're going to do turbocharging. So first thing we're going to do is add the turbo kit. Easy enough, right? Um, today and for this video, I'm going to use the Remnant Performance Turbo Kit. There's also the TurboKits.com Turbo Kit. They do provide similar results. Um, the reason I'm going with the Remnant Performance is because it is lower priced to begin with. And I think it's going to fit a lot more people's budgets to go this route. All right. So we're going to go with the Remnant Performance BK2 um, Turbo Kit. As for the turbo size, I do recommend that you bump up to the highest, uh, the, the 70 Omega with the T51R billet duals um, ball bearing turbo. The T51R modification, um, what it does is if you look at this turbo, you can see how the housing looks. The turbine wheel sits in the middle and obviously, and there's this little, um, I would say like a moat almost <laughs> that goes around the the turbine housing um it creates like a jet type of noise the the noise is incredible um it it's definitely worth the money So, I mean, obviously, you can just go with a regular, the, the 70 Omega, and still make the same amount of power. But that, that T51R modification is well worth the money, and you will fall in love with your car every time that turbo spools up. And everybody around you is going to look at your car and go, what the heck is that jet noise coming from? All right? So, let's do that. Um, this turbo kit, just to go over a few things that it comes with, standard-wise, um, I'm just going to go over the list here for you. Um, obviously, we went up to the um the t uh the 70 omega so it is a bigger 
um, turbo than what it comes with standard. It has the extra spool up noise, like I said. It is a billet compressor wheel, um, dual ceramic ball bearing, so it's going to have the best spool. It's going to also give you the best flow when it comes to the top end of the turbo. So that is the one that we are recommending to go with. It comes with everything you need, including intercooler, all the piping, all the couplers, all the brackets, all. Basically, if you need it to install this kit, it's going to come with it minus the tools. Okay. Um, I have seen people install this in their driveway. I mean, technically, I don't recommend that because it is a very complicated kit. But if you have the know-how, if you know how to work on your car well, if you're mechanically inclined, you can definitely do this yourself. My recommendation for 90% of you out there, um, take it to a shop, have them do it properly. Because I have seen some horrendous, and I mean horrendous, DIY jobs. Um, that end up costing even more at the end because they have to take it to a shop to get it fixed. All right. Um, so we're going to add this to cart. Next thing you're going to need, um, because the kit pretty much comes with the intake and the front part of the exhaust, only thing you're going to really need to add to that would be an exhaust system. So let's go back to Genesis Coupe. BK2 exhaust. The one that I recommend, if you saw my BK1 video, um, I recommended that you go with the Arc Grip exhaust. I'm remaining the same on this as well. The reason I like the Grip exhaust for force induction for the 3 8 is it's actually a true dual exhaust system. So it's a true dual 2.5 from where it connects to the piping. Um, of the turbo kit all the way out to the back. So this is going to provide the best flow for you. And with a turbocharged system, you want that exhaust flow to be very, very, very free of restrictions, free of anything else that you can basically put in the way. So this is the one that I would recommend. Um, tip wise, there's an option of polish tip or burn tip. Burn tip is the blue tips that you get. Polish tip is nice and clean. I I personally prefer polish, so I'm going to add that on there. All right, so we're done. No, I'm just kidding. There's a few more things that we need to add. Um, in order to run a turbo kit properly, you need to know you need to know what's going on with it. All right, so you need to be able to um, monitor the car. So we're going to need gauges. Thankfully, with the BK2s, we have three OEM gauges in the middle. Um, right in the center, um, center console area, right under the, um, the navigation screen. So that's where we can actually put gauges. Let's see here. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the wrong one. So we need to go to gauges. So universal gauges. I would recommend going with the AEM. AEM seems to be one of the most accurate gauge systems out there that I've worked with. Um, now we're going to need three gauges. Uh, one of them being air fuel ratio, because that's very, very important to make sure that you're going to have proper air fuel ratio um, and that, you know, you keep your eye on it. All right. So we're going to put in the UEGO Y band. Let's add that to cart. Okay. Let's continue shopping. It's going to bounce us back into the AEM page again. Um, next thing we're going to need is to watch oil pressure. Okay, Oil pressure is very, very important. Um, if you don't have the proper oil pressure, um, you're going to destroy your engine pretty much. I mean, that's oil is the most important thing when it comes to making sure your engine does not um, eat itself. So I'm going to actually post. There's going to be a link right here on the top right um, for oil and what what's the importance of it and basically it's going to show you you know what what spun bearing means and why spun bearings are caused by bad oil or low oil pressure and things like that so definitely give that a watch so let's throw this on there to make sure we can get some oil pressure um next thing we definitely need to watch um not only just the oil pressure but we do need to watch boost so since we're adding um, 
turbocharging to it, now we need to actually consider watching the boost levels. Now there's two options to this. We can either add a boost gauge, or we can even just jump up to using an electronic boost controller. But what I'm gonna do for this particular example is I'm gonna just use the boost gauge because my example right now is for running this turbo kit on a completely stock engine, okay? So there's no reason for us to turn up the boost um, and do anything drastic like that. So we're just gonna go with, oh, I'm sorry, that's a true boost boost controller. We don't need that. We actually just need a boost gauge. There we go. So I'm just gonna add a boost gauge, all right? There we go. So now we can um, not only run the turbo kit, but we can actually monitor what's going on with the car. All right. Now, what else do I recommend on top of this? One, one biggest thing that's required on top of this is a tune. So let's get that going first. With a turbo kit, you're going to need a custom tune. Okay. So let me explain that a little bit. So we're gonna to go to ECU tune. We're gonna to go to the Alpha Speed custom tune. Let's see, BK2, Octane. Yeah, let's do pop and banks, force induction. All right, so this is basically where we're sitting uh, with Alpha Speed custom tune. You can actually find an Alpha Speed dealer near you if you're not near us for any reason. Like, you know, if you're in like Florida, you don't have to bring us your car to have it dyno tuned through us. You know, there are a lot of Alpha Speed dealers um, throughout the United States and some in Canada and things like that. And, you know, we're looking to expand into other countries as well. So look for an uh, Alpha Speed dealer near you and they should be able to get you hooked up with, you know, a custom dyno tune or a custom street tune for your application. So this is just to give you an idea of pricing of where it could be. Um, I believe with the Remin and Performance Turbo Kit, it does come with a map sensor upgrade, which there is an upcharge to this on top of the $1,000 price that we have here right now. Um, I don't have that up updated on the website right now, so there will be a $150 upcharge on that, so keep that in mind. Um, but that 2.0 map sensor that comes with the Remin and Performance Turbo Kit allows your OEM ECUs to actually read the boost. Um, and that is the secret sauce, basically, to making sure that your car runs proper boost levels and actually the ECU is able to um, act and counteract whatever happens uh, while your car is being driven. So it keeps everything safe and running perfect. Okay. Now, one other thing I do want to recommend that you do on top of all of this, all of this is water meth um, injection system. If you don't know what water meth is, I'm going to link under the video on the top right here. Um, water meth system is going to not only boost your octane level, but it's going to make sure that your engine is going, going to run cooler and it's going to run safer. So if you're running on an OEM engine block with nothing built, this is highly, highly recommended that you run water meth to make sure that your core is going to last you for a long, long time. Okay. So let's go get some water meth. Um, you can do AEM or snow, uh, snow performance. There's comes with like a gauge controller, which looks cool. Um, you, it could also double as a boost gauge as well. Cause it does show boost. So that might be something that you want to look into. Um, let me look here like this right here. You can see the, um, you can see the gauge that comes with the kit. See the gauge right there. Yeah. It reads boost this way. It's not the, it's not the best alternative to a boost, uh, gauge. So I don't really highly recommend that you use that as a boost gauge, but it could work is what I'm saying. So if you went with a snow performance kit, you can do it that way. Um, for this example, though, since we've already included a boost gauge in the um, in the previous gauge adding, I'm going to just use regular standard AEM kit. 
All right, the AEM kit comes with a controller like this. Um, usually the the water meth controls are set it and forget it type of controls. So while you're tuning, the tuner is going to tell you where you need to put the start and uh, full dials at, and then you just put it away and never look at it again, pretty much. So let's throw that into the cart. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's pretty much all we really need in order to turbocharge your 3.8. Um, so with everything said and done, you're coming in under $10,000. Um, and obviously I'm just covering the performance part of this. You know, I'm not going into aesthetics or anything like that. So if you start modifying your car, you know, you put wheels on it, lower it, you know, body kits, obviously that's going to add up. But this video is solely for turbocharging the BK2 3.8. And this is pretty much basically what you're all going to need. Um, one other thing that I do want to mention is the turbo kit itself bolts up to your stock headers in stock form running, you know, five to seven PSI, you'll be fine running the stock headers. You'll be able to pass emissions and everything as well. Uh, once you start building the engine, you start pushing for very high horsepower, um, high boost levels. It does get to a point where you do need to change the headers out, but keep that in mind. When you do that, you are not going to pass emissions because now you're not going to have the OEM catalytic converter in place. So, all right, so have fun modding. This is going to get you probably around, if you are on a manual car, around 430, 450 horsepower at the wheels, uh, which puts you at like 550 crank. I mean, that's that's supercar numbers if you think about it 550 horsepower at the crank you're looking at porsche 911 turbo numbers i mean that's great right you can have so much fun with a car that's almost tenth of a price of a porsche 911 turbo okay that's the number that you see on lamborghinis and ferraris and you can do that out of your hyundai genesis coupe by just turbocharging all right, I hope this video helps you out on your, your journey through modifying your Genesis Coupe. Always keep in mind, maintenance is a huge thing and tuning is a huge thing. So make sure you keep up with all your maintenance. Make sure you talk to your tuner about every move you make on the car to make sure that you're going to have a reliable car for the future. All right, have fun modding and I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Go!